what's up guys oh my days i have just finished my uh, boxing session oh my god i'm absolutely obliterated after that one-on-one -on -one private session with the coach mate absolutely kills me every time it's like i think it's only my fourth or fifth session boxing oh, but um the guy just kills me annihilates me high intensity interval training sort of three years of my conditioning day as well i'm just doing learning the fundamentals at the moment i absolutely love it but the geezer he absolutely annihilates me destroys me fucking hell so i'm a bit knackered right now anyway let's get into the topic and the topic i wanted to start today is uh eastern eastern spirituality and eastern philosophy you know your buddhism taoism etc why i think why it's so popular in the west and why i think ultimately that popularity the reason for that popularity is to keep you a slave you know i have been in the, the self-improvement game for a while now uh so 20 probably when 26 when i started so yeah it's seven eight years seven eight years something like that trying to do you know, this whole self-improvement self-discovery thing trying to improve myself better myself all the time and I first started, the first thing that got to, that caught my attention was Buddhism and, you know, the philosophies and the spirituality from the East, spiritual practices from the East. And that's just, it just started like mainstream. Like when you first get into that stuff, you think like, oh, you know, you're, you're one of the outliers and, you know, you're, you're above like more you know normies and uh, you know yeah most the average person isn't into that stuff but at the same time the eastern philosophy you know it's so ingrained in like modern popular culture that it's not <clears throat> anything crazy and, and and it's it's almost mainstream now um you know the spirituality you know how many people you meet especially women they say they're like oh, i'm really spiritual i'm a spiritual person <laughs> and I consider my spiritual person, but my spiritual journey and my spirituality that I that I, I spout is um, totally different now to, to that Eastern philosophy. And you know, if you dive into it and you know it, it's very much I can't. It's tough to sum up the Eastern philosophy in one sentence, but it's very much sort of a letting go. process you know you got to let go of so many things you got to strip down your, your, your who you call yourself who you call who I call Ryan you know strip down your ego let go of of striving for um, wanting of things um, and yeah it's it's about you know basically almost coming down to a minimum lifestyle right and it's great. Listen, it's a, it, there's many, so much great stuff about it. I have a lot of, I'll have a lot of time for it, a lot of respect, and I think it's practical in many, many things you can apply to your life. But ultimately, if you go down that sort of route, you're only going to be fulfilled and satisfied with that if you go all the way. And by all the way, I mean like you've got to go live off in the mountains and meditate every day in, in a cave you know or go live in the forest and meditate every day otherwise um you what are you going to do you're just going to clash with modern day existence you know you, you're really going to clash you can't really want to become for example you can't really want you know be call yourself you know practicing buddhist and want to become a millionaire at the same time that's too much of a clash you know in buddhism it's like you should not even want to become you should get rid of all desire to become a millionaire because that desire and that on the, the wanting to become that person is gonna just you know disappoint you you know and just lead to frustration and and suffering and so like i said you're gonna end up clashing you're gonna end up and that's how i felt when i first started off and going down the buddhist thing and i would try and convince myself that i didn't want anything or desire anything and i could go live on an island and just drink coconuts all day and i'd be happy and i try and convince myself of that and really i didn't that's not what i wanted and really i deep down i knew that what i wanted to do was i wanted to make and achieve more and become more of myself become more accomplished become more skilled uh, attain more success and so on 
then less and do less, which is basically an Eastern, Eastern, the Eastern premise. And, um, you know, there's great things you can apply to it. Mindfulness, gratefulness, um, you know, you know, if you, if you use it, it can definitely decipher between what actually is necessary and what isn't, what's a necessary desire and what isn't. It's a good balance to bring into your life. <coughs> God, I'm breathing heavy after that session. Whew. But, um, so there's, there's good aspects to that, but there is, it's super popular in mainstream culture. It is super popular and it is so popular. And I've come to the, I don't even think it's belief. I think it's a realization. The, in that the reason why it's so popular and it's pushed by the mainstream it's very it is pushed by the mainstream um and that is because it'll keep you a slave my friends it will keep you a slave because if you just don't desire to get better if you don't desire you know financial freedom right if you don't desire to create more money more money equals more freedom if you don't desire that and you just go down this Eastern philosophy and be grateful for what you do have and blah, 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 and not strive for more, you will stay a friend, you will stay a slave. And like I said, unless you go live in a cave, unless you go live in the woods, right? And you go off and to the Tibetan mountains and shave your head and put on orange robes and become a monk, you're gonna be a slave. And ultimately we know now, if you're watching this channel and you're, you are an awakened, ritually an awakened person to what's going on in the world, the elites and the people in power, they want people asleep and they want them a slave. And it's been a great tool for them to push that in the mainstream. You know, push the Eastern philosophies as like, you know, this spiritual <clears throat> Eastern mentality. And, and like I said, that all that is going to keep you um, basically a good little slave. It's not going to have you someone who's like super ambitious super determined become super successful have financial freedom do what they want when they want go where they want they don't want too many people like that the elites don't want a mass uprising of successful people because then that means you can't and that means a population that cannot be controlled and we've seen since it's especially since this whole corona thing i mean if you if you're one, one of those people since corona has happened beginning of 2020 we're at the end of 2022 now and you still haven't realized that governments want and uh, want more control and they love control and they and how easy it is for them to control you as a population if you haven't realized that, that that's what it's ultimately about then i don't know if there's any hope for you now honestly two years into this thing crazy anyway so that that whole philosophy the eastern style is super popular that's my belief on it i got sucked into it at the beginning but very realized very very early on that it wasn't going to serve me on my on my purpose on my journey as a man. I think um, it's more popular with women, um, you know, because of of certain certain things. You know, we're di men and women are different, right? Men are m men are more ambitious, especially after the age of thirty. Once we have kids, I think as a man, I feel it as a man, I want to get more, I want to achieve more, and be, be have more success, more freedom because since I've had kids. And I think maybe it's a little bit the opposite with women, but um, yeah, if you're watching it and you are a man watching this, the Eastern philosophy, take, you know, there's some, I would say don't, if you haven't dived into it, you haven't looked into it, look, read into it. There's still a lot of benefits there. Take what's necessary, but understand that you cannot be fully immersed into that and integrate it into your life completely. Because then again, like you just said, you'll be, you'll be, it will pacify you. That's what it is. It's, it's a philosophy to pacify the masses. Um, and it will keep you a slave. Takes what's necessary, there's some good stuff, but ultimately reject it. Be a man of purpose, be a man on your mission, be a man to create success in all areas of your life. Um, and that's, that's a better philosophy to hold yourself by. And there's so much more out there, so many more uh, practices and philosophies and philosophers and disciplines you can learn about that'll help you on that journey. I hope to be this channel to continue to be a good outlet in terms of uh, helping you guys with that. But yeah, that's my thoughts on that one. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Join me for the next one. I think for the next one, I'm probably going to go into why men, seeing as I just done a boxing session, you know, why all men should learn how to fight. That's a, probably a good one. So tune in for that one, guys.